The last time I was here, I walked away defeated. This time, things will be different. Let's get to work. The undersea trench that separates Inazuma from the rest of Tavat. This place is among the most impenetrable locations in the game, right on up there with Shrines of Deaths. It is incredibly vast. If you wanted to walk along the width of the trench from one end to the other, it wouldn't just take you minutes to do so, it would take you tens of minutes. This chunk of the map here, that's the trench. And we can't just jump on in and start walking, because the entirety of that flat surface below is a teleport barrier, mechanics of which we'll touch on later. What's more, once you get about two thirds of the way in, a storm spawns that spams lightning all over. Further yet, if one braves to go beyond even the storm, they get slapped with a fog flag. That's what I call this because of its introduction in the fog at Golden Apple Archipelago, and are hastily teleported away to their nearest unlocked location. So to quickly summarize, we can't touch the ground, we have to brave a storm that's wielding a lightning machine gun, we have to push through a wall that'll teleport us away if we so much as touch it, and all this across a stretch of terrain that's nearly the size of the place we're trying to reach, Inazuma. That's a lot of problems. Oh yeah, and we're only allowed to use this guy. Fortunately, it's not my first rodeo here. I've got a whole video dedicated to my first attempt at this, which was in version 2.0 immediately after Inazuma was added. As mentioned, that attempt ended in failure. Despite that, it got me acquainted with the nature of this beast of how the floor can be crossed with geoconstructs, of how the lightning can be manipulated with the camera, allowing us to control where it will strike. Even so, I needed more. How much more? How about an entire tectonic plate? Part 1. The Discovery of New Land I present to you this landmass. It is peculiar. Why is that so? Because it did not exist the last time I was here in version 2.0 proof of which is on screen right now. And to my knowledge, they didn't add anything to the overworld map in this area. Why the devs would go out of their way to add land nobody would normally ever be traversing, heck if I know. But this landmass is monumental. In fact, without it, crossing the trench either isn't possible while restricted to traveler, or is so much more difficult that I'd probably give up. And that's saying something because this is already excruciatingly difficult. I took to scouting the area on my main account. I needed a route, and I needed one that met every requirement on my list of criteria. First, and most important, it needed to be a route that required no climbing. Second, it had to not reach too high, else the traveler would be pulled to the surface of the water. And third, it couldn't have any pitfalls, since falling into one would require climbing to get out of. I found my answer in this cliffside that can be easily walked up. The ground is raised slightly at the bottom, so it can be walked on safely. From here, the path goes up the cliff and towards Jinrin Island, breaks to the southeast, reaches all the way to the east shore of Narukami, and brings the traveler to the surface at the cliffside of the Kamisato estate. I now had a way to cross the trench by playing a game of The Floor is Lava with Starfell Sword and a route on the other side that's free from pitfalls and requires no climbing. That just left the storm, of which camera tricks could aid in if necessary, and the fog flag. The plan to deal with that was the logout trick from last episode. Part 2. Crossing the Trench Honestly can't say I'm looking forward to this. Sure, always up for a challenge, but as you know by this point, it's not my first time trying this. It's a very frustrating and time-consuming endeavor. But if it works, well, that'll be absolutely fantastic. I want Electro, and who knows what mysteries an Inazuma without the Archon quest is hiding. So this lowest portion can't be walked on. Interestingly, if one jumps onto it, they are placed where they were last standing. However, if one walks onto it, they are taken incredibly far away. There's the first of many, many stepping stones. Let's speed through this part, shall we? Seriously, the size of this trench is absurd. Are we there yet? Still going, and for reference, it's been about 8 minutes. 
Right here is where I discovered the new land and said aloud to myself, Hold on, that wasn't there before. Okay, there's the storm. This is where the real work begins. I opted to only use one camera trick here, to prevent lightning from striking behind or atop me by standing at the very edge of Starfell Sword. Of course, it's not 100% effective, but you'll see it mostly does the job. This whole process is nerve wracking because of the 10 minutes it takes to cross using Starfell Sword. The lightning will always launch the traveler onto the ground if it connects, resulting in a teleport back to the beginning. The same is true if Electro is applied while airborne, zapped, flinched, fall to the ground, and teleport. In some of these situations, I really question what I was supposed to do. It's striking both simultaneously, so guess I'll fail. I decided I should get a checkpoint. If I went straight instead of turning at the corner, I'd reach a part of the cliff that could be stood on. Moving the respawn would be a huge time save, so I did just that. And in the process, I learned a terrible truth. A fog flag had been set, and I logged out to avoid it. Upon logging back in, I was teleported away. The logout trick? It didn't work. I tested multiple times, to no avail. It wasn't working because the fog flag gets set when loading in, and triggers a teleport before any commands could be entered. This is due to a combination of the player character being placed into the world prior to the loading screen fading, and also the game just taking too long to load from login. I needed faster loading times, but my computer is already pretty strong. It was back to the drawing board. I racked my brain over possible alternatives. I needed another way to trigger a load screen, something that could be used anywhere. Portable waypoints weren't an option given my adventure rank. It seemed a lost cause. And then it hit me. I just needed a Yaka. Or to be precise, because we're a lone wolf traveler here, I needed Ayaka's test run domain. This is the loophole. We're only in the second episode and I'm not about to throw out my traveler only promise, so hear me out. My major condition, as stated, is to use the traveler in all instances except those where the game forces one to play a specific character, while also locking out the ability to switch characters and or reconfigure the party setup. And would you look at that, three trial characters and a party setup feature we can't access. Sounds like fair game to me. I even included this same footage when explaining these rules in episode 1. And let's be honest, it's not like anything within this domain contributes to game progression. I won't even claim the rewards from them. With Ayaka's test run domain as our blade, it's time to finally cut through the storm wall. Part 3. 130 loading screens. This is it, the final plan. Should it fail, Inazuma at Adventure Rank 7 isn't happening. A sigh of relief. That was my reaction to finally getting through that. Hours of attempts and a 90 minute finale condensed here into a short span. That this succeeded had me grinning from ear to ear. Anina Zuma without the Archon Quest meant so many new things to explore, to test. But I wasn't out of the woods yet. The storm may have passed, but until I got a teleport waypoint, any mistake would be a fatal setback. 
Clearly, you can see my nerves on full display as I wander around the sea floor with my hand over the panic button. My eyes were glued to the top left corner of the screen, fearful of that fog flag appearing out of nowhere and ripping this success to shreds. Luckily, that didn't happen, and I managed to make it to the planned spot. I had tons of stamina recovery food in the event I had to swim longer than anticipated, but things went smoothly, and Traveler Sun made it to dry land. Climbing this cliff was terrifying. I know I have enough experience in this game not to fall to my death while climbing, but the stakes were so high that I just kept imagining it happening. And finally, the end. It's only fitting that the Kamisata residence is where we set our first marker. All of Inazuma to explore. Honestly, where to start? That can all be figured out some other time. Even though Inazuma has been reached, there remains yet one incomplete objective. Let's go get Electro. Because I'm unsure of how things will function, I chose not to go to Rito. Instead, it was time to get a ship and go sailing. Surely the Wave Rider is much stronger than the Traveler. That's not very good. I suppose it's like 10 times Traveler San's current damage, but if it doesn't scale, yikes. I actually couldn't find any information on this, so we'll have to test the Wave Rider out some other time. Here it is, the Statue of the Seven at Kanazuka. I know I said the end once already, but this truly is the end of this mad, mad mission. With Electro unlocked, many more puzzles, treasures, and quests are accessible. And of course, everything on Inazuma as well, which requires Electro for just about everything. Where do things go from here? I would very much like to obtain Ame no Makageyuchi, which I think could potentially be the Animo Traveler's best craftable weapon. But whether that's even possible or not remains a mystery. Additionally, getting constellations for Electro Traveler is high on my priority list, since I believe it'll be my strongest combat style for a while. Going to need to gather plenty of Electroculus. In light of those goals, next time we'll be poking around an Inazuma that was broken into, without ever having done the Archon Quest, to see what all is different. This is Musashi, and Traveler-san, signing off. Till next time.